Hi, my name is Byron Sersino. I am from the Laguna Pueblo. I'd like to tell you about how the Lord has changed my life. Having grown up on this Indian reservation, I've been blessed. But I want to talk to you just a little bit for what I dealt with as an individual. Growing up on the reservation, sometimes you feel separated from the shopping malls and because of the distance and the joy that comes in sharing with those things. As a family of uh, nine and our seven siblings and a mom and dad, I watched many things here. And growing up on the Laguna Reservation, I saw the alcoholism, I, I saw the domestic violence, things that are still a challenge for the most part. But one thing for sure, I was seeking something that might satisfy my heart and cause me to have joy. And having been raised here, I, I wanted to try different things. I grew up in a family where they tried to encourage one another, do your best. In high school, for example, I actually ventured out on becoming a, a drummer for a rock and roll band. And so I got a chance to look at the nightlife from the point of view of being a drummer. But really, when I began to look at that lifestyle, it, was not, it seemed like they were having fun, but the next day people would be sick with their hangovers and there would be a lot of fighting and parties afterwards. They, they would be smiling, but they, I, I believe they felt like me. There was something missing in my life. And after I graduated from high school, I uh, went to a school not too far from us called the University of Albuquerque, while it still existed at that time. But I hung around with the crowd that loved the party. And my second year, second semester, I withdrew from that school. And I found myself back here on the reservation. Uh, I was working at the uh, Anaconda Mining Company, which is near the village of Pawati. And I found myself thinking, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I joined the military, and I thank God for the privilege to serve our, our, our nation in the armed forces. When I was uh, transferred overseas, I got transferred to a place called Okinawa, Japan. And I was attached to a group of Marines that were going to have a combined exercise with the military in South Korea during the winter months. And uh, it was going to be for three solid months. And so we went up there and during the night hours of that training, when the men weren't firing their, their guns and so forth, the men were in the, in the tents. There was a group of men that were meeting nightly. They were Christian men and, and they were having a Bible study. And one particular Marine named Charlie invited me to that Bible study. I, I don't want to, he must have invited me over 20 times. I would tell Charlie, yeah, I'll be there and never follow through. One night I went to my tent after dinner and that conversation, that last conversation I had between me and Charlie came up in my mind that I told him I'd go. I ended up going to that Bible study that night and those men were very friendly one to another. One, one of the things that uh, grabbed my attention was the compassion, the love, the kindness they had. You know, the Bible tells us uh, that Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. And I saw that. They didn't call one another sergeant so-and-so. It seemed they were addressing one another by their first names in that, in that particular meeting that night. The chaplain who was there, his name was Rick Gates. He began to share with me the gospel, how that Jesus Christ lived on this earth, God's only son. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He emphasized the fact that Christ was not only crucified and buried, but that he rose again on the third day. When I began to think about that he rose again and that he was living, then I began to really think, I can put my faith in Him. I can trust in Him. And shortly before all this was taking place in that military training time, some of the men that I was attached to began to tell others that the North Koreans were going to attack us Americans that were right there in that training camp. And that really got me concerned. And where, where would I go when I die? Is there a real heaven? Is, is there a, a real hell? And the chaplain began to say, you know, God loves you and God demonstrated his love towards you. How the Bible says God committed our, his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Truth is, I had no problem admitting that I was a sinner 
and I began to understand that I ha had done something wrong and that I needed a Savior. I was not trying to justify anything. I was worthy of what the Bible calls the payment of sin. Romans 6.23 brings it out that the wages of sin is death. And here now this man is sharing how Jesus Christ had tasted death and how he died in my place and how he demonstrated his love if I would just simply put my faith and trust in him. And that's what happened, folks. That's what I did. I put my faith and trust in Jesus. The Lord had forgiven me of, of my sins and he'll forgive anyone. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I used to think that if someone is going to go to heaven, it's going to be based on how good a person they are. I thought that, you know, if I died in that, that particular training exercise, that I would go to heaven because I was serving in the military. And I was also thinking, I was not like a criminal who was on death row waiting for to be executed. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. And the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What that man shared from, with me that night was the greatest news, how Christ came, died in my place, took the wrath, took the punishment for sin that I deserved, but he willingly gave his life so that I could be forgiven, so that I could become a child of God. That, my friend, changed my life. I never thought I would come to a point that I experienced at that time and where you could actually have joy. You could have an inner peace. Maybe, maybe you were like me searching for something. I've said it many times since then. I found what I was looking for. I found a God who loved my soul and cared enough about me to give His Son that I might experience the forgiveness there's only one sacrifice that matters in eternity, and that is the sacrifice of God's only Son, whom we know as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His sacrifice paid for my sin. And I can't tell you how many sins I committed, but I can tell you this, I wasn't perfect. I tried to do good, but as the scripture says, I always came short of God's perfect standard. But I know now, that Jesus Christ, according to what he has stated, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. Now right here in Laguna, we have many people that are filled with decisions just like anywhere else. And the greatest decision you'll ever face is what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with God's only Son? His offer of salvation extends not only to you, but to everybody in the entire world. I thank the Lord for the salvation. I thank the Lord that He has caused now joy and peace and love. I, I don't have the, the concern and the worry. So many of us Indians, we're superstitious. We're scared about many things. And we're scared about uh, people in general. But the one thing you don't have to be afraid about as a Christian is death. For you have heaven to gain. There's a real heaven where there's no more heartache or sorrow or suffering. But there's a real hell to shun. And maybe you're like me, looking for that joy, looking for what am I missing in life? What, why am I here anyway? Why, why was I created? Well, I know this. You were created that you might know the Creator God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been a blessing to discover the true meaning in life and to know the God of heaven and to know Him as my personal Savior and to read His precious book, what we call the Bible, and to know the joy and the fellowship of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I look back, I was looking for an adventure. As a Navy corpsman, I was looking for the opportunity. I thank God for the pay. I actually got a chance to work with some of the greatest Christians, with those Marines in those days, even some Navy men. But what I found was I was missing something that I really believe every person on earth needs to know, and that is God has a son, and his name is Jesus, and he wants a relationship with you. And it's gonna be up to you whether you not believe. You might be like me that heard bits and pieces, 
and was wondering, what, why on earth am I here? Wanted to be a rock and roller. Try college and we're not against education. But you know what? Even a paycheck did not feel that longing in my heart. And this is where God directed me. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you are contemplating, maybe even suicide. Maybe you've going, been going through a rough time. Maybe you live with an alcoholic mom and dad. Maybe you've been in jail and, and, and you've, you've seen the heartache of all the, the jail life. Maybe you've been in and out of the bars and maybe you've had one relationship after another. I'm here to tell you there's a friend that will stick closer to you than anybody else I know. There is a real purpose for living and it's found with a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ.